Hello. This here is Kasperi. He is my sister's dog. I'm now babysitting he at my sister's place. So I decided that I could use this time to make a little rambling video again. And this time I'm rambling about uh, Adventure Time. And sorry in advance because this may be a bit, bit of a stammering for me. Because um, there's so many episodes and I'm not really sure where to get started. But I think we can get through. Mm. This here is <laughs> the end, the beginning. <laughs> She's Lady Rainicorn, and she no, don't bite her. She is one character of the so. Adventure time. I bought this for my sister as a birthday present. It's supposed to be a scarf, but now it's a some kind of ornament in her place. <laughs> so, where should I get started? I think I could just talk a bit about the different aspects of Adventure Time. The show is a uh, cartoon for children, I guess, but um, I'm not really sure, well, I, I think that a lot of children could like it, but I also understand perfectly why a lot of adults watch the show, and I'm not just saying that to defend that I'm watching a cartoon for kids. I've heard that argument many times in internet, example Reddit, but really it gives a lot for all ages. So first of the, like the shallow surface of adventure time, a lot of people may like it because it has colors, it's really colorful and um, I don't know. Well, talking about shallow, there are some stupid jokes, like fart jokes here and there, and screaming, and all this stupid stuff. But the way they make it is quite fresh. It's a uh, How should I put it? It's just the timing and the voices of the characters that is quite unique for a cartoon. For example, a character called Lemon Crab, it screams all the time, but somehow I find it quite funny and I usually hate that kind of stuff. <laughs> and the fart jokes are so weird and burping. <laughs> And they are not doing it like the usual stupid jokes. They are just some random flatulences here and there. <laughs> I'm not even sure why I'm talking about that because it's not that common in the show. <laughs> but it's just somehow in my mind because I just watched uh, an episode called Ignition Point. Which starts with Jake the dog and Finn the human. Uh, passing these gases <laughs> but then I can talk about the story I mean it's a uh, every episode almost every episode has a unique story and they are usually pretty cool and they have a lot of meaning behind them but the important part is uh, what they are not saying out loud the little details that these episodes give. It's very rare that a 
show puts this much detail to backgrounds both character backgrounds and the backgrounds of the scenery and the stories take place in the land of Ur and this land is it's clear that there has been some kind of apocalypse and people are not people anymore there's so many like candy people and living robots and stuff like that you think the human is supposed to be the last human on earth but I guess it's not true and now I could say that there are gonna be some spoilers on me speculating some of the things on Adventure Time so if you haven't watched the show you might want to switch this video off or I don't know maybe you will forget these things <clears throat> but there are like I said there's some details in the scenery that really say that um, there has been an apocalypse there is so many like um, battleships and uh, all these stuff stranded on the land and a couple times they have shown the earth how it looks now and there is a big big hole on the surface of the earth and they kind of say that what that is in the fifth season and the character development in the show is quite unique all these characters they are usually not going super deep into the history per se but they show some snippets on like how these characters develop through the series now it's in the uh, end of the fifth season and there's so much going on they are not underlining anything but they are just making clear like um, a real show should do they are not stuffing things and facts to people but it gives a lot of room for speculation and um, just thinking what has happened and what's the story of this character and why does he or she do that mm. and then uh, well on the surface the show is quite happy and quirky so much fun stuff happening there but there is also a lot of sadness and grief that is just like an undertone behind the show. It's amazing how they have done that. For example, there are these uh, episodes called Five Short Crables, which gives you five little, like two minute shorts and they have a um, theme that is um, like putting them all into uh, one big block like for example the first uh, five short crables uh, theme was all the senses one episode um, told about smell and one about seeing and stuff like that and the, in the end of the episodes they uh, point at what the uh, theme of the episode was. But there is this one, Five Short Crables, that doesn't say the theme. And it's not that clear, but when you think about it uh, a little, the shorts tell a story about the Coupler Ross um, idea of five stages of grief there are denial anger bargaining depression and acceptance and that tells to me a lot about the show and about how humane the characters are there is so much bad happening but they are not 
like I said, stuffing it to the watcher, to viewers. And yeah, there's so much to talk about this show. There's so many themes. For example, the fears. The main character, Finn the Human, has this really bad fear of the ocean. And he's supposed to be a really heroic character, but there is this one, like Achilles' heel, which is the ocean. And this gives a lot of space for speculation. And uh, it's come quite clear now why it is. There's also been this character called Coast Lady, I guess. And she has appeared only in a couple episodes. The first one, Finn saw her and he was petrified. And after that, he said that now it's in my member vault and he kind of like forgets it. But some episodes later, uh, we are seeing the Finn's worst fears. And the worst one seemed to be when he was in the ocean. And there was again this ghost lady. And uh, I think it shows that the ghost lady is Finn's dead mother. And that is how Finn got stranded away from his parents. The mother uh, drowned and Finn stranded in the land where Jake the dog's parents found him. Like I said, they haven't said this out loud, but it's really there when you think about it. And I mean, if, even if there wasn't a truth behind these theories that Adventure Time has caused, it's so nice to see a show that enables you to think about stuff more in depth. Another theme I would like to point out is that there has been a couple of premonitions of the future and alternative realities. And there Finn has been this boy with different nose, for example, but his arm is cut off and there is this robotic arm uh, in that place and this really shows that maybe something will happen to Finn's arm in the future because in all this for example in a dream where he looked in the mirror he had this robotic arm in one pillow fort episode he uh, was older and Again, he didn't have his other arm. And then, in the later episodes of five, the fifth season, Finn bought this cursed sword called Grass Blade, or Blade of Grass, I'm not sure. And, uh, like I said, it's cursed. It took control of his other arm can control it but I'm quite sure that this means that this is the way he loses his arm in a sense that maybe not uh, in a material way lose the whole arm but he kind of lost control of the arm by this sword And then one other theme I like to point out is the ambiguous morality of the people, of the characters. For example, Princess Bubblegum, and she's one of the main characters as well. Uh, some people say that she is pure evil, but I really think that she is just kind of like a prison of her geniuses. She's a real genius and she can create living things and she has in a way this curse that uh, 
almost everything that she creates turn out not that good. For example, Lemon Crab or Goliath. But also, in the end, she makes things that she has made worse better. So it kind of even out, evens out. And she's really a pragmatic, all for the greater good type of character. Which could be said that it's not that immoral, but it's just another point of view to the whole morality thing. And also, for example, this mm, whole lemon crab situation, it's a really nice parody, in a way, about uh, the um, Soviet Union and other this kind of authoritarian countries and what are the main problems of this kind of thinking <laughs> for example lemon crab sometimes says things like um, like you have no purpose and I've tried uh, conditioning, reconditioning, all this classic uh, <laughs> left-wing stuff. <laughs> so what other aspects I could talk about? Well, I also understand why some like recreational substance users like the show for example when you're high and you see all this colorful and sometimes psychedelic stuff um, the show gives a lot of great visual information for your brain and uh, for example in one episode they actually call out the name DMT which is rather weird for uh, children cartoon <laughs> but yeah all in all I just I, I suggest you to watch the show give it a go it starts out pretty pretty wacky and really random and it's all about the perspective of the character I mean, in the first season he's 12 or 13 and it, the show really looks like that but as he grows older chronologically with the seasons it starts to get more serious and there's more relationship uh, stuff happening and all this is done in a really great way if you ask me it's not naive or anything uh, the show raises a lot of good questions, like ontological questions, existential questions, and uh, about morality, goodness, <coughs> goodness of people, and all this great stuff. And uh, it's just amazing feeling to get immersed to the show and the background, what has happened, what will happen to the characters, to the land of Ul. They are in the right amount giving away these glimpses of um, kind of like traces that what has happened and why so many great characters a lot of great voice actors for example Tom Kenny doesn't do his Spongebob voice but does amazing Ice King voice which is another good character I mean first he looks like your common antagonist with only bad uh, bad things to say about him but it turns out that he's just kind of like cursed himself as well and it's one of the most heartfelt stories told in children's show if you ask me And an another good voice is Jake the Dogs. He is the voice. I don't remember his name now, but 
it was as Bender and as well uh, for example Waka from Final Fantasy X I think the human's voice is fantastic it's so good he can do this crazy childlike screams but also kind of like deep voices and he is so good with showing his emotions through voice <laughs> and also this Lady Rainy Kwan character she only speaks Korean and it's a fantastic joke <laughs> you have no idea what she's saying but she's really saying some stuff and sometimes it's even some key things for the episodes all these little details make this show so good and if I really started to talk about the show in depth it would take forever because there's so many theories going on in the internet and it's also great fun to go to reddit and read them I've sometimes put some of my own thoughts there but yeah I'm sorry if this was just all over the place which it was but uh, all in all too long didn't read would be that Adventure Time is a great show for both kids and adults. It gives a lot to people who think about what they have seen. It gives nice jokes and good kinetic humor and uh, all, all in all a great story that you want to go into. So without further ado Bye bye and see you in the next video.